Alice the Car Doctor back with another informative video. Today I'll be discussing how to bleed the cooling system, or as I like to call it, burping the system. You probably noticed this car from the previous videos that I've done on it, the water pump, um, or are you coming from the radiator job video? Yes, this cooling system was completely shot, so I had to replace just about everything on so it. So here's what you're gonna need for this job. Coolant, of course. I always get full strength because I like to add my own water. I never pay for 50-50. If you do go full strength, make sure you get distilled water. Don't use faucet water because it has a lot of um, things that likes to eat up metal. You get rusts and stuff, all kind of crazy stuff in your cooling system. You don't want that. So distilled water from like Kroger's, very cheap and full strength antifreeze. Why pay 50-50? Um, over here, I have a burping funnel. Um, you can pick this up from your local parts store, AutoZone, Advance. And for the cars that have a, um, uh, it's like a drain screw in the cooling system, this is a 3 8 I don't know why I have two, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's just the way it came. So let's grab your wrenches. And let's jump right into it. So first step, I'm going to loosen the drain plug, the uh, bleeder screw, and while the vehicle is off. Now, good people, you can do this process for any car. It don't matter if it's a truck, car, Mercedes, whatever. Now, some cars don't have a bleeder valve on them. So you will just, I'm gonna walk you, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through both steps. But for this step, all you're doing is adding coolant. And if you come over here closer, you can hear the air coming out. Oh yeah, here. So, gonna keep topping it off. And this funnel really helps because it brings everything up high to really push all the air out of the system. I'm gonna switch to my water now. And the idea of this, it just makes it a lot easier. I don't completely trust cars with bleeder valves, so I still do it the traditional way. So that's why I will be doing both ways. And the idea of this, once you still see a steady stream and you no longer see it spitting up at you, then you're supposed to be good to go. Like I said, I don't trust this way. I like doing it the old fashioned way, which I'll walk you through that step next. And that appears to be it. Pretty simple. All right, the next stage, well, the next step, is the old fashioned way. The next, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna crank up the vehicle, turn the heat on high, because some cars have um, heater control valves that gets closed off on some cars. So just make good practice just to turn your heat on, just in case it has a heater control valve, or if it don't, it's just still good practice. So that's what I'm gonna do now. It has that heater control valve, um, you still have air in the heater pool, and you're going to issue. So this next step is just a waiting game. If you have one of these funnels, great. You can just look at the bubbles and make sure it stop bubbling up. Um, remind you now, just bled most of, well, I think all the air out the system, but I'm just doing it this way to, to double check. Um, if you don't have one of these funnels, 
Uh, if you have a radiator that has a um, field neck on it, you'll just pour it in there and observe the bubbles until it stops bubbling up. Or if you have a reservoir tank, you just look down in there and make sure it's not bubbling up. So this process takes about 10 minutes just to make sure you have everything out there, all the air out the system. Part of this next step I like to do is massage my upper radiator hose. Be very careful because the vehicle will be running. You want to make sure you're not in the way of any belts while you're doing this. So be mindful of that. I do the upper radiator hose because sometimes the lower radiator hose is very hard to get to. Another way to know everything is good, once you start um, heat, very hot heat start coming out the interior, you know, you're going to have the heat on, so you're going to be able to tell if it's heat coming out or not. Um, and obviously, if there's no more bubbles bubbling out the reservoir, then you can close the system down, let it run, let the fan cycle on and off, just to make sure the car is you know, cooling back down on the song. Uh, make sure the AC off, because if the AC is on, the fans is just gonna automatically come on, like now I need to go in and turn the AC off because the fans are on. You don't need to be on. I have no more bubbles. So that's telling me that the cooling system is completely clear. Now, another cool thing about this funnel is when you get me to take the system uh, when you get me to take the tool off, you can plunger it up with this and just take it completely off. Be nice and cool. Uh-oh, it beats the purpose. You just release it right into a container of your choice. What I'm doing now is just raising up the RPMs just to double check everything, let it pressurize up, make sure everything is good. And it helps it heat up a lot faster too. So that's another tip. All right, just got finished checking over everything. The car has been running for about 10, 15 minutes. I made sure the hand wasn't fluctuating, going from hot, cold, well, hot down to the middle. That means you still have air in the system if it is doing that. Now, when tighten back down the, the uh, bleeder screw, you just want a little bit. You don't want to really crank down on it. This will easily break. So just keep that in mind. And remember, you can do this for just about any vehicle you're working on. So this applies for all makes and models. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. If you have any questions pertaining to this job please write down in the comments i love hearing from you guys you know um like subscribe if you're not a subscriber you know it helps me out a lot um alice the car doctor out really enjoyed you guys see you guys next time